Oh man, the clouds are getting good in every direction and sunlight. Perfect combination of epic clouds and soon to be golden hour sunlight. We got about half a mile more to hike. Gonna set up some time lapses. And then as per usual, what you do when you're waiting around on time lapses, I was gonna piddle on my phone. And that brings up today's video. So it's back. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but on the S20 Ultra, they have finally returned video pro mode. I'm gonna talk about it today, but first, oh yeah, I am vlogging on my phone right now, the S20 Ultra, not in pro mode, because I need the wide angle. We'll get into that in a minute. But first, I'm gonna get hiking, I'm gonna get set up, and then we'll talk some more about pro mode. I'm not gonna lie, those clouds concern me a little bit. Even though the weather forecast said there was no more rain, those look really dark. And according to the map, they're kind of coming towards me. I'm almost there though. Let's get set up. Time lapse is rolling. Got a few minutes to sit down, talk about pro mode. Watch out for rattlesnakes. <laughs> Cause it is just about rattlesnake season here in the desert. So let's talk about pro mode. So the first thing I should note is that we're only talking about pro mode for video right now. I will do other videos on the pro mode for stills. And then the second thing to note is I think this is only available on the S20 Ultra, not the S20 Plus. So let's pull up the Pro Mode here and uh, we'll show you what we've got. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through, first of all, what's in the Pro Mode and uh, we'll talk about some things. So the first thing is you'll notice that we are super overexposed and the first thing that you can control is your shutter speed. So I'm going to since I don't have filters on right now, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust this until it's looking decent, 15 hundredth of a second. So for video, <laughs> let's go ahead and say that is no bueno. So suffice it to say, uh, I would want a filter and that's one of the benefits of having pro mode now is that I have the option to put a filter on and I have an option to adjust my ISO so if I can slide that here I can bring it up and uh, when it gets darker I can bring up the ISO I can also drop the shutter speed I have an option for this is the downside is unlike I think like some of the other phones like LG's I think have like a log profile but Samsung doesn't have that yet but they do have this profile here that's uh, set to standard so I can tweak this a little bit and I can maybe uh, do some a little bit of tweaking and get it to a flatter looking profile and that is going to help and then I can save that so I could just leave that there and that's now set so now you're seeing so now you're seeing uh, the manual profile that I've set and you can save those there's still not going to be a true log style profile but that's going to help a lot, especially if you want to decrease some of that saturation and that contrast that Samsung likes to add in right off the bat. So there's those. I'm just going to go ahead and reset it to standard. Then the next thing we've got here is the AF. By default, it's set to auto. So you'll notice you have, just like in the stills, you have the little flower for macro. That means uh, there. So now it's focused on my hand and that's a pretty close focus distance. And then we can slide that away. You'll notice that everything's blurry. That's because manually focused uh, super close. So now we can slide that up to infinity, which is a little mountain symbol. And coincidentally enough, I have mountains to focus on. So you'll notice too, when I'm sliding, that we have those green, everything's looking green, the green stripes, green zebras. That's called focus peaking. And that is a wonderful addition to any camera. 
So I'm very glad to have that. Anything that's lit up in green is going to show you as being uh, in focus. So that's your manual focus and your autofocus. If you want to toggle between those, if you just use it and scroll, then that'll put it in manual. And then you can click the manual and then I'll go back to auto and then you can tap the screen and tell it where you want it to focus. So the next thing we have control is white balance. So by default, again, it's in auto. And again, just like the focus, we can change it and we can slide it down to warmer or colder to match the lights that we're using, whatever. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it in auto because it does a pretty good job. And then the next thing above it, you, you'll see is the plus or minus with the little bracket and that is the exposure. So that's gonna let you know when it's on zero that it's uh, properly exposed. And then when we go to slide it, now it's plus seven, plus 1.3, plus seven, plus 2.0 is what it maxes out at and it's gonna turn red. That 2.0 means that you're either two stops or more or greater uh, overexposed. And then the same thing with the negative. Now it's saying I'm uh, more than two stops underexposed. So that'll kind of help you gauge what it thinks is proper exposure. But of course you don't have to listen to that because that's the beauty of pro mode. So the next thing we should, I should probably start with this is the aspect ratio. So we have 16 by nine, we have the square crop for Instagram, and then we have the full, uh, which is the full length of the screen, which is a little bit greater than 16 by nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on 16 by nine. We also have the ability to change in here, the settings we can now do all the way up to uh, full frame, 60 frames per second, or we can do 4K in uh, 30 frames per second, but not 4K 60 in pro mode. So we don't have that option. And of course we don't have the option for 8K either. Uh, and I'm not gonna bother with HD because why would you ever use HD in 2020? So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on full frame, 60 frames a second. That'll that'll allow me to do uh, slow motion, which is great because then what I can do is I can come in here and I can dial in the right shutter speed of the 180 rule, which would be uh, twice my frame rate, which would be uh, roughly, there it is, 1 1 25th of a second. So notice that's too bright. Well, I can fix that if I just grab my filter. So normally I use uh, moment lenses and then I throw a filter on over the moment lenses. I don't have them right now. I got to get a new batch because mine were stolen a while back. But I'm going to order some new ones. And then I'm going to get the, I have the moment filter too, the moment variable ND, but this is my Polar Pro. And you'll see if I just hold that over. Now that's too dark. That's a six stop. So now I can brighten it up even more. And really that's too bright for the six stop. So I would have to up my ISO if I want to go correct. So I'm going to up it to 200 and then I'm going to bring my shutter speed back up to 125th. Now I'm going to bump my ISO up again. So that's looking a little more properly exposed if I have a filter on there. And now we can look around and that's actually the shadows are kind of dark. You see how it snaps back in. If you don't want it to snap in, you can control that focus and make it a little bit smoother. So that's another nice thing of the pro mode, being able to control that manual focus and uh, getting that smoother pull focus. All right, so that's kind of it for the settings for pro mode. It says that it has video stabilization on here, but it doesn't have the super steady stabilization so that's also something to be noted so if you're going to do that then doing it 60 frames per second and then slowing it down or putting it on a gimbal would be your best bet for something uh, smooth video like quality all right so that's the settings in pro mode for the video so let's talk about when i would personally want to use that and why and i've already mentioned it so if you want anytime you want just straight up complete control over your video then obviously you're going to want pro mode 
any time where you want the 180 rule and you want to get that cinematic footage and you want to be able to use a filter and know your shutter speed because the thing on the phone is the shutter speeds for video are all over the place. You don't know what they're doing. You don't know where it's, it changes uh, constantly based on the light and for getting more professional quality video that is not what you want. You want to be in control of that shutter speed at all times. So that right there is the biggest reason why you would want to use pro mode for video. So let's talk about some of the downsides real quick. I think my time lapse is done. I've got it hooked up to this new uh, motion control thing that I'm trying and I'm really struggling to get it to work properly but I think it's done. Alright now I need to start a new time lapse. I'm gonna put a long lens on and get the clouds on those mountains so be right back. All right, so while that's going, I got the 400 millimeter up there getting those sun rays or God rays or whatever you want to call them nice and close. While that's going, I think I'm going to set up another tripod and do a time lapse with the S20 Ultra. And I think I'll go ahead and put it in pro mode so that we can see how that looks because uh, I haven't tried that yet. So let's get set up real quick. All right, so that's going very precariously set on this edge with a uh, tiny little tripod. And it's really muddy down here. You can't see that, but I'm like slipping. <laughs> so I'm gonna stay a little bit away from the edge. So while that's going, let's talk about some of the downsides of pro mode as of right now. This could be, potentially they could be fixed, but as of right now, the biggest downside to me and to a lot of you based on uh, the comments and the instant messages and all of this stuff that I've received over the past year or so, the biggest downside is that in pro mode, as of right now, we cannot use the wide angle or the telephoto that are on the camera. So if you try to use a telephoto, if you zoom in, it's just gonna crop in on that main sensor and it's gonna end up looking like crap. So try not to do that. The workaround that I use is I use third-party lenses. So I use Moment lenses. If you guys follow my channel, then you know I've done a lot of stuff on the Moment lenses. Uh, I've reviewed them. This is not a sponsored video in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I am not sponsored by them at all. That's just what I use to get around stuff like this, and that's what I recommend uh, for you guys. It doesn't have to be Moment lens. Any lens that you can conceivably get onto the S20. The reason why I use Moment though is because they have typically the best quality glass and they also continue to make cases that will allow you to fit the lenses on there. So some of the other lenses like the Rhino Shield lenses, which I don't think they make anymore, but the Rhino Shield lenses will also fit on the Moment cases. Uh, there's stuff like that. And they also now make, Moment now makes the, the little adapter thingy that you can put over uh, any phone or any case without having to use their case. So that'll open it up a lot. That way you don't have to spend an extra 40 bucks on their case and then an extra 40 bucks on the adapter and then the extra 100 something on the lenses. All of that can kind of add up. And that's another downside is that Samsung is forcing us to go that route. Like we don't have a choice. If you want telephoto or you want super ultra wide uh, with pro mode, then you're gonna have to go to a third party lens setup like that and it's gonna cost you extra money and that may or may not be worth it to you. So I'm just throwing that out as that's a negative for me right now. Another negative is I think I mentioned this is that uh, they don't have a log profile. I know there are some other phones out there and there are some apps out there like Filmic Pro where you can get log profiles or a log-esque profile. I don't know how Filmic Pro does it, uh, but it is more of a log profile than just lowering the saturation and contrast on 
the pro mode like I showed you. So that's kind of a bummer that Samsung hasn't included that. If To me in 2020, if you wanna say pro video features, a flat profile, a log profile of some sort definitely fits that bill. Oh, this is interesting. So uh, another thing with the Ultra that I've noticed is that they took away the uh, the apertures. So on the S10 and the S9 Plus and the Note 9 and the Note 10, I believe all of those, all the way from the S8 or Note 8, it, no, whatever. For a while now, Samsung has had the ability to uh, change your apertures. They've had the F1.5 and the F1.8. Well, now because of the sensor size on this S20 Ultra being like three times the size of the old sensors, uh, it deals with depth of field better uh, differently and with the bigger pixels and with a bigger sensor size it also is theoretically better at low light. I will test this however I have not yet but all of that suffice it to say is Samsung has gone with instead of the being able to switch they've gone with the constant 1.8 I believe it is so uh, just note that you can no longer change it like you could in the old if you had a phone that could do that you can't do that anymore with the S20 Ultra so you're stuck with the single aperture. The upside is hopefully the sensor being larger and the pixel size being a little larger, hopefully that will help make up for giving you a little bit more natural depth of field as well as getting slightly better quality out of lower light stuff. All right, feature Brent here. A couple other things that are downsides to the pro mode that I forgot to mention are no 24 frames per second. So that's like arguably one of the biggest things about filming professionally is 24 frames a second. So you can do 24 frames a second in 8K on this guy on the Ultra. However, you cannot do pro mode in 8K, so either or. So if you want 24 frames a second in pro mode, you're gonna have to get Filmic Pro or some other professional app like that, third party app to do 24 frames a second. So that's a big downside. Last thing, one more thing. Bitrate, super important. You cannot control your bitrate in pro mode as of now with the S20 Ultra, and that is a huge shame. So if you want professional looking, better, higher quality video, then being able to have a higher bitrate is much better. And if you want to be able to do that on the phones, you can use something like Filmic Pro, and that will help a lot. They have the ability to change their bit rates. I don't know if any other apps do it. That's the only one that I've used that I know about. Uh, suffice it to say, you cannot change the bit rate. And with the bit rate that Samsung includes with the Pro Mode, just the regular standard bit rate, it gets chunky fast. It's compressed, it's hard to break, it's hard to color grade. And the more you do to it, the worse it breaks. It doesn't look as great on YouTube and uh, on social media and stuff like that. So being able to increase your bitrate would definitely go a long way to making better professional higher grade quality videos on our phones. All right, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. I think that's kind of it. This was just a uh, welcome to pro mode, pro mode is back kind of video. And hopefully that helped you to get an idea of what is in pro mode for the video and what Samsung is uh, categorizing as their pro mode for video. So if you guys have any questions about anything that I went over or didn't go over concerning the pro mode in the video, leave those in the comments below. And I have a lot more coming on the S20 for the photography side, for the video side, uh, some comparisons. You guys are really on me about the night stuff. And you know, I've got the night skies here, so I'm just waiting for the Milky Way to get a little bit higher. I'm gonna be testing out the nighttime photography. Uh, I'm gonna be testing out if you can shoot the Milky Way, the stars, all that good stuff. So. If you haven't already, definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel. I've got new videos every week. If you're watching this in the future and I've already done all that stuff and you haven't seen it, then check out the playlist that I made for the S20 Ultra. It's got all my videos there for this phone. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Ooh, hit that like button. It really helps me out. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna get back to enjoying my beautiful New Mexico skies and doing some more time lapses. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.